Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Rumi Hills, and I'm a PhD student at the Plasmant Research Group of the University of Antwerp. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my research into plasma catalysis for CO2 hydrogenation towards methanol. So as you all know, one of the biggest challenges we are facing today is climate change, which is caused by the emissions of greenhouse gases, namely CO2. So the current uh, carbon cycle, as it looks now, is depicted on a slide. So we have the fossil fuels, which we burn, uh, burn, in, burn for the gain of energy. And during the combustion, CO2 is released into the atmosphere, where it accumulates, which causes global warming and climate change. So the question is now, how can we reduce these CO2 emissions? And uh, one of the possible ways to do this is to convert the CO2 back into the fuels uh, using sustainable energy. Of course, uh, this is not very easy. So the next question is, how do we convert this CO2 in a sustainable way? And one of the ways to do that is a combination of a plasma and the catalyst, uh, which is called plasma catalysis. So there are several reasons why plasma catalysis is an interesting way to convert the CO2 back into, uh, in my case, methanol or other fuels. First of all, it combines the advantages of both plasma conversion and catalytic conversion. So for plasma conversion, uh, the advantages of plasma conversion are that it is very energy efficient. It is also easy, a plasma is also easy to use uh, in combination with renewable energy because a plasma can be easily switched on and switched off, which makes it easy to deal with the intermittency of renewable energy sources. Furthermore, a plasma can operate at atmospheric conditions, which is also uh, energy efficient, but a plasma is not very selective. And in the case of a CO2 hydrogenation plasma, it's mostly selective towards carbon monoxide, which is not as interesting as methanol. So on the other side, we have the catalyst and cat catalytic conversion is very selective, which is good because the plasma is not, but uh, cat catalysis is generally energy consuming because catalytic conversion takes place at high pressure and high temperatures, but the plasma can overcome this as the plasma is more energy efficient and can operate at atmospheric conditions. Next to this, there is also the possible synergistic effect in plasma catalysis. This is depicted on the slide for uh, dry reforming of methane. So you can see here the conversion reached by plasma alone, the conversion reached in thermal catalysis, and then the sum of these conversions, and the sum of these conversions is clearly lower than the conversion that is reached when you put the catalyst in the plasma, so in plasma catalysis. This synergistic effect is caused by uh, interactions between the plasma and the catalyst. A plasma is a very complex mixture, as you can see on the slide. It uh, exists out, out of electrons, ions, molecules, radicals, and all these plasma species affect the catalyst. And the catalyst can also affect the um, plasma, for example, by enhancing the electric field. So how are we going to study this complex system? It is not easy because there is a lot going on, but the solution to this is to use computer modeling, because computer modeling allows us to examine the interactions separately and not everything at once, as you do with experiments. Furthermore, computer modeling also allows detailed analysis of reaction pathways, so you can really pinpoint that is a pathway that is important for methanol formation and we want to enhance this pathway. But of course, in the end, you always have to validate computer models with experiments. So the goal of my PhD is to develop a model that describes the whole conversion process of plasma catalytic conversion from CO2 to methanol for several catalyst surfaces. And we can then use this model to pinpoint the conditions and catalysts that are best for conversion of CO2 into methanol. So first of all, uh, the first step of my PhD, for the first step of my PhD, I developed a, 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 a model that describes the effect of two, two kinds of plasma species, namely radicals and vibrationally excited species on uh, the classic catalysis process on copper. So I studied this via a microkinetic model. This microkinetic model, uh, for this microkinetic model, you're going to define rate equations, which describe the change of the uh, surface coverage of the adsorbers S over time. This change, of course, depends on the reaction rates of the reactions in the model. And these reaction rates, in turn, depend on the activity of the species, which for absorbent species at the surface is the surface coverage. And for gas phase species, this is the partial pressure. But this partial pressure in my model is kept constant because I only have surface reactions, so I'm not studying the plasma uh, reactions yet. So this is important to remember. Then the rate, reaction rate also depends on the rate constant, and the rate constant is determined by the entropy of activation and the enthalpy of activation, which we calculate from DFT. So once we have defined all these rate equations for every adsorbent S, 
we can solve these for steady state, which will then yield us the theta, which is a steady state coverage. And we can then use this to uh, calculate rate, reaction rates to normal frequencies and analyze the pathways. So then uh, we first run the model for thermal catalysis um, to analyze those pathways. And in thermal catalysis, there's only CO2 and H2 in the gas phase. So there is no effect of the plasma incorporated. So we see here that there are three pathways that are mentioned in literature for conversion of CO2 to methanol. We have the green pathway, which is the formate pathway through a formate intermediate. There is the blue pathway through CO and the green pathway, the hydrocarboxyl pathway. So these pathways are all in the model, but um, we see that only the green pathway and the blue pathway are important for methanol formation. So the orange pathway does not contribute significantly to the methanol production. Then when we look at the uh, effect of one kind of plasma species, namely the radicals, to investigate this, we're going to add hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and oxygen to uh, the gas phase because these are the most uh, abundant species in a typical CO2, H2, D, H2, DBD plasma. When we add them, we see that the turnover frequency of methanol increases. As you can see here, the green line is the turnover frequency of methanol for thermal catalysis. The orange line is the turnover frequency for when you add radicals and intermediates to the gas phase, you can clearly see that it's higher. Uh, then we went a little bit further and we saw, we analyzed the effect of the separate species. So first we look at the effect of hydrogen. Um, this hydrogen uh, increases the hydrogen coverage and this makes the formate pathway more, more important. And there's also this contribution to CO um, via two intermediates. So this is, then looks like this. So you can see now that the hydrogen is now uh, split into hydrogen atoms in the plasma, which absorb and increase the hydrogen coverage. This makes the green pathway more important. So the turnover of the green pathway towards methanol goes up. And then there's also a contribution of CO formed in the plasma. The CO absorbs and can then react via either formate or formaldehyde to methanol. Lastly, there is the effect of the oxygen atoms. Uh, the oxygen atoms are not very important, but when the partial pressure of oxygen becomes higher than hydrogen, we see that uh, there is surface poisoning of the oxygen atoms, which means that the surface is completely covered with oxygen atoms and the thermal frequency of methanol becomes almost zero. So we do not want this. So from this, we can conclude that uh, we want plasma conditions to aim for high CO and hydrogen content because this will be favorable for methanol formation. Next, we looked at the effect of vibrationally excited species. As you can see here on the slide, the vibrationally excited species have a lower barrier for certain reactions because they have a higher energy state, uh, which means they, the lower barrier then makes the reaction rate go up, and this can increase the turnover frequency. But when we put this in the model for a typical CO2, H2, DBD plasma, we see that there is an effect, but the effect is very small compared to the effect of the radicals. So uh, for a typical DVD plasma, this effect will not be important. To summarize, uh, we made a microgenetic model that can study thermal catalytic conversion of CO2 to methanol, and we see that they are the formate pathway and the C pathway through CO are the most important pathways. Then you, we, uh, we study the effect of the plasma radicals. We see that there is an increase in the turnover frequency, which is good news, and an influence on the pathways. The effect of vibration excited species is less important under typical DVD conditions. So the takeaway message is that we should aim for high CO and hydrogen content because this will be favorable for methanol formation. Of course, my model can be further improved. So the first step I already did uh, develop a simple model that I study the effects of the, of the plasma on thermal catalysis pathways. Next, I will include the earlier ideal reactions. I will expand the model to other catalyst surfaces like nickel and gold. I will develop a plasma kinetics model so the plasma chemistry is included in the model and we are not only looking at the surface reactions. I will study the effects of a zinc promoter and I will validate my model with experiments. So there are several uh, opportunities for collaboration within uh, Capture. So we always need help with the DFT calculations on uh, different metal surfaces. We can also use help with experiments, uh, for example, drift experiments or catalyst characterization or uh, more fundamental research on the impact of the, for example, the electric field on the catalyst is also very uh, helpful. You can find out my and my, my professor's contact details on the slides. Uh, thank you for your attention.